Hi, this is Pastor Rick. Today, I want to take you on a journey that I think will be fun. We're going to talk about financial clarity. I want to show you how you can be clear and how this can change your entire life. If you focus your finances. Now, I believe that Christians aren't always clear about their money. I think they have a problem with making money, having money. Uh, they hear a lot about giving money away, but they don't have a lot of knowledge about building assets. And I want to show you some things that will help you. The Bible is full of it. This series, this study is going to take you on a journey that will help you have financial clarity. So stay with me. It's going to be great. Enjoy today's message. You might want to call a friend and say, you need to watch this one. I'll send it to them. Link it and send it. This is going to be really good. Hi, this is Pastor Rick. Now, today we're going to take a journey that is unique and different. It's one of those things that churches don't do well with. We're going to talk about finances for the next few weeks. We're going to talk about money, and I want to share some principles with you, and then I want to take you on this great journey through seven people in the Bible who were patriarchs and their view of finances in the book of Genesis. But before I take you on that journey and show you how they viewed money and how they viewed resources, I want to start off by laying a foundation for a moment, and I want to talk about financial clarity. That's the goal. And I, I really believe that there are people who have great dreams in their life. They want to achieve things. They want to accomplish things, and especially in a world that's facing the kinds of things we're facing today. Finances become a really important part. Whenever you have a pandemic, an earthquake, or you have anything that's a traumatically difficult season, the first thing you wonder is, can I survive that? And, and that starts with the conversation around money. Now, here's my view. Christians tend to struggle with that. People struggle with it. Non-Christians, everybody struggles with it. They struggle with finances, and they're not really always sure. They're not clear. So what I want to do is paint a clear financial picture. Now, here's what you typically believe. When a pastor talks about money, the, the hook is give. Well, listen. Uh, that's not the hook today. That's not the hook. We, you know, we always invite you to give if you want to. Uh, that's just part of what we do. and We appreciate those who do. But that's not my main reason for being in your life is to get you to give money to me or to our cause. That, that to me, is uh, a rather narrow relationship. I believe that one of the missing things in, in conversations about money is uh, the subject of savings, especially in a religious environment, building assets and having resources. There are a lot of people that believe God will bless you financially, but you don't really have to do much other than be faithful to him. And that's not true. You can be a very devoted, godly, holy, holy, one more holy for you, holy person and be broke. One more time. You can be holy, holy, holy and broke broker the most. You can be because your view of money is, is kind of foggy. You don't have a money day where you look at your finances. You don't have a money plan. You don't have a budget. You don't know how much you're spending. You don't really have a clue other than money comes in your hand, money goes out. And if you're not careful, you'll think it's a God issue. So you'll pray to him like this, God, I pray for you to bless me. And if he could talk back to you, he'd say, how can I? I you, you're not the kind of person that holds on to money. You have no respect for it. You basically just kind of just spend it as it comes. Now, that is a tragedy that has become really evident in a lot of people's lives. I, I don't believe that people are poor because it's their fault all the time. But I do believe there are times when people are poorer than they need to be, and I have been at times poorer than I needed to be because, I, because of my ignorance. I wasn't clear. I wasn't clear. And a lot of parents are guilty of not really making sure their kids are clear. Clear about money, clear about savings, clear about assets, clear about having a house and the value of owning property and the value of spending wisely. And so I want to talk about it for a little bit, and I want to take you on a journey because I think this is an important topic. But let me kind of bring you up to date so that if you're following us and you're joining us in our teaching series, we've been talking this year about dreaming again. That's the theme. Every year I pick a theme. And so in talking about dreaming again, I asked one question. The question was for this year was, how do you dream again? How do you dream again? What do you do? You, 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 so you say, God, I, I want my life to be different. 
Well, here are four things that I said. First of all, you need to have a strategy, a plan, some kind of plan. Where are you going? Where do you want to go? What do you want to be? If you were looking in a mirror, who do you want to be? Here's what I say to myself. Show me the Ricky Temple you want to be. I want him to be dressed neatly. I'm a suit guy. I really, I really am. I, lo- I love suits. Um, but I've learned to be a little casual. But that I, Ricky, I want, my, I want my stuff pressed. I want to be on time. Not always perfect, but I want to be, for sure. I want to be prepared. I, I want to have peace. I don't want to be in strife. There's a list of things that Ricky Temple doesn't want in his life. I want my house to be clean. I want my car to be clean. There are things that I want. There are things that I, I don't want. I have a, based on those wants, I, I develop a strategy. And so you need a life strategy, and we've been talking about that early in the year. Secondly, we said you need to be mature. If you're going to dream again, you've got you, you to gotta learn how to dream with maturity. You can't be a child. You can't be a baby. You can't cry all the time and whine all the time and not face your responsibilities and look at things. You, gotta, you have to have a strategy. You have, to have, you have to dream with maturity. And thirdly, you have to dream with a plan. Dreaming without a written plan, and I say that on purpose, written plan, is, is, is really a pitiful way to live. And I use the word pitiful because that's just when I'm, your mom used to say that, don't be pitiful. <laughs> it's a hard word, right? But I don't mean any, I don't mean any harm when I say it, but it is because you don't know where you're going. You're like a guy getting in the car driving all around. You know, are you going to the mall? Are you going to the store? Where are you going? Grocery store? What, what's your plan? You need, you need to have a specific plan, and that's going to require you to be mature. And that's going to require you to sit down and write up a strategy. I'm trying to graduate from college. Okay, what's the, what's this, what's the strategy? I'm going to go to this college. Okay, what's the plan? We're going to go for four years, and we're going to take these subjects. There has to be more organized, more of an organized focus, if I can get this out. You have to have a clear sense in your mind what you want. And then once you have a strategy and you approach it with maturity and you have this plan, then you must be ready, confident. You must dream with confidence. You cannot be a person, I don't know what I'm going to be. That, listen, there's no time for that. There's, there's no time. People, people ask me, they say, do you ever get nervous when you preach? Well, yeah, you know, sometimes it bothers you, you know, especially in this season. I mean, it's like, well, you know, you're up here preaching and you just kind of hope you're doing all right. But I've learned something about preaching. You know, I've learned that uh, being afraid doesn't change anything. I might as well be confident. I might as well just buckle up and do it. And so you need to be confident. So dream with confidence. What is it you said you want to be? Believe you can be it. Go after it. And so there's, there's something about that that can change everything. But here's another piece that I want to talk about today. If your money is not right, forget it. You can have all the confidence you want. You can have all the plans you want, all the strategies you want. You can talk about, I'm strong in the Lord. I'm a, you, can, you can, listen, if your money is, is messed up, it just causes problems. It, 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 it will change the, the way you make decisions. You'll marry somebody because they got money. You'll, 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 you'll trick people into giving you money. If you have financial clarity, if you are a mature person when it comes to your finances, you can change everything in your life. Your whole head can just kind of get settled. Your mind won't be all over the place as long as you have clarity. Now, I want to say this to you. I have not always had clarity. I've managed millions of dollars over many years. And I'm telling you, I have not always had clarity. As a matter of fact, sometimes... It's not the amount of money that you have, whether it be a thousand, a hundred thousand, or a million, or five million, whatever it is. Whatever you are forced, blessed to manage, I've learned one thing. I've learned whether it's ten million, one million, or one dollar. There's one common thing: overspending doesn't work. It it doesn't work. I need to be clear in my mind about where my financial boundaries are. I am not saying be cheap. I'm not saying don't have fun. I'm not saying any of that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I am simply saying you have to be clear. So what I want to do is take you on a journey. 
And I want to take you to a place where I think you can kind of gain some insight. And I want to give you a list of things to think about, at least of questions to think about first, before I take you to Proverbs chapter 6. First of all, I want you to ask yourself, do you have a long-term financial direction you want to go in? Just think about that. So in five years, where do I want to be? You need to be clear about the best long-term financial direction for your life. Here's what young people don't realize. You will not always be able to work necessarily. You will not always have the same level of income. You need to hear what I'm telling you. You will not always have that. So you need to then focus and be clear about what your long-term goals are. If you work every, every day and you work every day and you work every day and you get paid, you work, you work, that's not a plan. That, that's not a strategy. That's called surviving. So first thing you want to do is you need to be clear about the best long-term financial direction for your life. Number two, you need to be clear about your cash reserves. How much do you really have right now? You know, I went to um, buy my first home. I never forget. Um, we were um, not really sophisticated financially um, as a family. We just believed in going to work and paying your bills and saving a little bit. But we weren't really like fancy people when it came to money. We didn't talk about balance sheets, cash flow, profit loss, all that stuff. We didn't talk about any of that. You know, just did you pay your bills? Yes. You guys saved some money? Good. Okay. You got some money in the sock in the bedroom under the closet? Good. All right. That's fine. But we did not, you know, you have a bank account with some money in it. That's great. But we weren't really sophisticated. So when I went to buy a house and the lady asked me, she said, um, I love this story. She said, well, you want to buy a house? I said, yeah. She said, um, so what, what, how much cash do you have? I never had anybody ask me that. I, I, this, this is the truth. I had never had, we were filling out my net worth, if you don't know what that is, right? Your net worth is your, you know, when you get ready to buy a house, they want to know how much, how much cash do you have and how much do you owe? So let's say I, I have $100, right? And I owe $50. My net worth is 100 minus 50, that's $50. I'm, my, I'm, I'm $50 liquid, $50 net worth. If I have $1,000 cash and I owe $500, my net worth is $500, right? So she asked me this because it's part of the form she had to fill out. And her goal was to see whether I could afford to buy a house. So she asked me, she said, uh, I remember where I was. I remember the street it was on. I remember the name of the company, which I'm not going to say. And she said to me, maybe you're watching. I don't know if you are. Hi. Anyway, so she said to me, she says, how much cash do you have? And I thought, you don't ask anybody that on, unless it's the 15th or the 30th. You don't ask anybody to ask somebody out of the cold like that. I was I whack. And so you know what I did? I lied. I did. I was a Christian. I lied. I said, I don't know exactly. And I knew it was somewhere between a little bit and almost nothing. I knew that. I knew it was because <laughs> I wasn't going to buy the house that day. I just wanted to know, know, know how you go about it. You know, I was coming in there to get the information. You know, I was just, uh, I want to buy a house. And she was supposed to say, okay, well, here's what you need to do to buy a house. I didn't expect her to pull out a piece of paper at the time, you know, when no computers back then, and just start writing down my numbers. That was a shocking experience. And I said, I'll get back with you. My people will call your people, and I'm leaving this room. Well, you know, in the end, it was, it was one of those moments where, you know, she, she said things to me, and I never, I never said this publicly before. I think I needed $4,000. I remember this $4,000 down for my first house and I I for some reason I don't know I just I thought that was a lot of money four thousand dollars wow cash like at one time see a lot of people <laughs> do not understand cash reserves if nobody paid you how long could you live if nobody gave you any money, and if, it, if there was nobody to borrow money from, and if you don't believe it's hard to borrow money and cash from people, just go do a test. Just call somebody. Say, could you loan me $500? Just, and watch the phone get quiet. It's going to be just crickets. Just crickets. They might even hang up. Just <laughs> They're going to say, for what? I just need it. Just say, I just need it. Need it for what? 
They'll call me asking $500, like, when are you going to pay me back? Don't know if I can. Wait, oh, wh- pardon? You don't know if you can? See, see, cash, I'm telling you, is amazing. And I, wanted, I want you to think about that. Be clear about cash. And I want to say one thing. This is a little hint about the future discussion. Cash is not credit, and credit is not cash. We are confused. Your credit card is not cash. I know you can I understand how you can use it and do fancy things. I've done it and get it, and I get all that. But here's the point. My goal in my life is, is to be clear what category things fit in. This is debt. This I have to pay back. This is not my money. I borrowed this money. I have to pay to use this money. This is cash. I'm not saying feel bad because you have credit. I'm not saying, matter of fact, it can be a compliment that you are responsible and they trust you. I have a great credit score and I work hard to keep it because I understand the power of being reliable. I want people to say Ricky Temple will pay us back. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a place for that. There's healthy, a healthy place. But you need to be clear that your goal should be to build cash. And I want to say this. Churches are guilty of not encouraging people to do this. And I, I, I got to get on here because I got to make sure I get done. All right. Now look at the third question. Uh, you need to be clear about your debt. So number one, clear about your financial direction. Number two, clear about cash reserves. Number three, clear about debt. And then number four, we'll come back to all this later on, clear about your assets. Now I want you to go to, and, and assets are all the stuff you own, by the way. That's your car, your house, your, 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 your furniture, your money, all that wrapped together. Those are your assets. Your liabilities are the things you owe. So we'll talk about all that down the road, but I want you to, to go with me to Proverbs chapter 6, and I want you to learn from an ant. This is a, an incredible story that, discover, that, that covers three basic things. The ways of an ant the discipline of an ant, and the habits of an ant. Now, this is a great illustration that, that just makes the point. So look with me, if you would, please, at Proverbs chapter 6, verse uh, 6. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. How long Will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? Verse 10, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and your need like an armed man. Now, I want you to look at the ways of an ant. I want you to look at the, the, the ant's daily habit. I want you to look at the disciplines of this ant. First of all, the ant provides supplies in the summer. That's really important. <laughs> they gather food for the harvest. They're not lazy. Uh, they are industrious, and he uses them as an illustration to get our attention. Now, I want, I want to say something I wasn't going to say, but I, I'm going I'm to take a chance. I'm going to say something to you. I, I think this, this should have been taught in church, should have been taught in families, should have been taught in our community a long time ago. You need to be aware that there is a summer and there is a fall. There is a season in your life when you will have resources. Some of you are there right now. And what you choose to do with those resources will determine your future. The ant sets aside some because the ant is preparing for the harvest, for the, for the winter. I, I don't know why we preachers don't get this. A lot of people live in a, an existing mindset. They, they basically eat up all the fruit, eat up all the food, eat up all their money, and they don't think about any kind of winter coming. So when a hurricane comes in town, like you hear in the south, you know, we have these hurricanes. They come in town, and, and then everybody has to evacuate. And, and people, people won't even leave town because they can't afford to leave. They, they, they tell you the flood's going to be 12 feet over your house. Well, I can't leave because I don't have the money. I'm just going to sit here and die. Believe God. 
all that many times is tied to the fact that they, there's no resources. Now, now, some of you are screaming. I can hear you. What about poor people? I hear you. I hear you. I'm not, I'm not saying there's not some injustice we shouldn't care. We should help people. I do that. We should help people. But I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that issue today. That, we'll talk about that down the road. I'm, I'm talking about what you can do with what you have. I want you to be clear about how the Bible frames your responsibility to do something wise in your season of summer. While you have money and you have health and you have opportunity, pause for a second and look at the ant. There's something about backing up the train. It is my growing conviction that part of the reason for some of what's going on in the world today, some of this is to give us a chance to reset, a chance to look at ourselves and say, how are we voting? How are our politics? How is our money? What kind of choices are we making? When we have the opportunity to make choices, are we making the right choices? And if I'm honest, I didn't always take advantage of my summers. As a matter of fact, many times I didn't even realize I was in a summer. I, I, I just thought, I don't know, life's going to always be great. No, it's not. Historically, it's never been always great. There are always dark seasons and then light seasons, happy seasons and sad seasons. There's always going to be seasons. The question is preparing for it, preparing your mind, preparing your heart, preparing your body. There's something about preparing yourself, understanding that I could be sick. I can get ill or something. And so don't get all spiritual. I'm not going to get sick. Okay, okay. Any here's about mine. People get sick. And if you don't take care of yourself now while you're in your summer, if you do catch something, if you do get sick, your immune system is so low, you don't, have, you don't even have a chance to fight. So you're in the summer. You can go walking now. You can go and prepare now. This, this ant is teaching us how you live your life, what you do while you can. The question is, will you ever do it? Are you going to do what he says, you know, in verse 9? Lazy, slothful, slow. That's what it means, slothful. Just, I'm coming, God. I know you call me. I hear you, Lord. I'm going to change my life. I'm going to be different. I promise you I'm going to be a real devoted saver. In about four years from now, I'm going to start saving at least $10 a month. I mean, what is that? Why, why aren't you changing today? Why is it taking so long? You now have an opportunity, and I, that's how I'm viewing all this is happening in the world. I'm saying, you know what? Rather than sitting around and trying to, first of all, I can't control what people do. Some people are going to ignore everything. And they're going to just not care, and I cannot worry about that. But what I can do is prepare for my winter. That's what made Noah's story so amazing. He got in the ark. Some people will never get in. They'll never listen. They'll never do right. You can't worry about them. It may be in your family. It may be your cousin. It may be your brother. It may be your daddy or your mama. But you need to understand, while I have a summer, an opportunity to change my life. I need to take advantage of that, whether it be my health or whatever it is I'm facing. I like this ant. He makes me think. He makes me face myself. He makes me look at my life and say, come on, Temple, what do you want for yourself? What do you want for your life? Summer's here for some of you. You still have a job. You still have a place to work. Summer's here for some of you. Maybe it's time for you to look at this and say, I need to change. You know, next time I'm going to take you on a journey where that is uh, surprising. I'm going to talk about seven guys over the next several weeks that teach us a lot about our assets and our money and our life. They take us beyond where the ant takes us. I mean, these are, now I want to give you a homework assignment. I want you to go through the book of Genesis and find me a broke person. I want you to find me a person in the book of Genesis that did not have enough food and that did not, I want you to find, you're gonna, some of you are going to think you found somebody, but I'm going to show you seven guys that you're going to have a hard time proving they, they didn't have anything. They understood the power of sowing. I'll give you one little hint. People from Abraham, uh, Noah, Jacob, Joseph, Esau, J all, all the people, that, the main people we're going to talk about, all of them had one common understanding. If I want to eat something, if I want to eat something, I have to grow something. I have to 
I have to plant something if I want something. They understood if I want to have meat, then I can't go eat that one, 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 one lamb. I have to have that lamb have a bunch of babies. or Otherwise, I'll have one meal and that's it. They had to understand their assets. They had to understand how to manage their life. Do you understand where you are? Now, I want you to look at the preacher. I'm going to tell you something. I'm done for the day. This is your life. This is your life. One of the greatest things my mother ever taught me was, look at me, son. She used to get down. Look at me. She was short herself, but when I was little, she said, look at me, son. She'd get, look, look right straight in her eye. Nobody's going, to, nobody's going to take care of you, son. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. You understand that if you're lazy and slothful and trifling, nobody's going to help you? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand if you lie, you'll steal? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so do you understand the importance of making up your bed when you get up? Yes, ma'am. You guys learn how to cook. I want you to show, show you how to come in here, Rick. I want you to learn how to cook. I was the only child. So I want you to learn how to cook for yourself. I want you to learn how to put your clothes on. She used to tell me, all right, now put your shirt, put your shirt in your pants. All right, put your shirt in your pants. All right, now shine your shoes. She said, now check your fingernails. Clean behind your ears. Oh, boy, she had a whole plan. You bathe every day. And if you go outside, you bathe twice a day. You brush your teeth every night. You are responsible, glory to God, for your life. Sometimes I didn't feel like brushing my teeth. You know what she'd do? She said, come here. She, she used to have a partial. She popped it out of her mouth. So you see that? That's going to be your future if you don't brush and floss, brush your teeth. And then she popped it back in and said, now, you want your own teeth. She was wonderful. She played with me. She laughed with me. My life was wonderful. I have not, listen to me, I have not one bad childhood memory. Imagine that. Not one. I'm not making that up. My mother's passed on several years ago, 1999. I am not making that up. She spent time with me. She loved me, but she taught me a valuable lesson. This is your life. Do you hear what I'm saying to you, my friend? This is your life. And if you don't back up this train and deal with it and become clear and allow yourself to be mature and challenge yourself to change this, you know, sometimes I go through this little thing, well, I could have, should have, would have. How about now? Should have done some real estate. What about now? Real estate's still going on. Should have gone to school. School's ain't closed yet. I should have saved. You think you can't save now? I should have exercised. Don't just look at your stomach. Don't look at your body. Go work out. Start walking right now. Why are you talking to me? Just go start walking around the table. There you go. There you go. Get ready to go. There you go. <clears throat> your life. We're not talking about mine. Your life. Your winter. Your summer. Be like the end. We have a lot to talk about. You want to stay with me next week? It's going to be amazing. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for those who've heard this message today. Some are going to take charge of their life. They say, now, pastors, help me understand. I need some more clarity, and I need to get a handle on my life. Let somebody help me if I don't know how to do it by myself. Find somebody that's responsible, and let them help me. If it's my spouse, let them participate in this process. Don't go broke alone. If you can have a team, pull the team together. Let everybody do what they can. Let's band together and fix this. All these grown people in the house and we broke. What's wrong with this? All, there was something wrong with this picture. All of us in here. All of us laying around. No money. Struggling. Begging and stealing from each other. That's not God's will. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that families would rise up today and say, we're changing today. Right now. And I speak it over their life. And I thank you for it. And I also pray for those who would say, Lord, I need you in my life. But Pastor Rick said today, was about money and financial clarity, but I need spiritual clarity. I need God in my life. And I pray they would open their hearts today to the transforming power of the living God that he would bring healing to them. If they don't know Christ as their Savior, they would say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. God, come into my life. I'm, if I'm not a Bible person or a church person, it's okay. You love me right where I am. And so I, I pray, God, that they would open their hearts to you. And I give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen, I thank you for being with us today. I really appreciate the opportunity to have you with us. If you prayed the prayer at the end of this service here and you said, you know, Pastor Rick, I need a, I need a walk with God. I need to have some kind of clarity. There's some information I want you to text to, this number on the screen, and I want you to 
reach out to us and let us send you some information to help you start your walk with Jesus. So feel free to use that information. And, and, and don't just listen to the sermon, but reach out and text that number and say, I want to start a life with Christ. And you may say, no, Pastor, I don't want a text number. Well, do this one. Email me directly at pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org. If you email me, I'll respond, I promise. And I'll send you some information to help you start your life with Jesus. So you can use either option you want, but that's pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org. And if you need prayer for something, if you're going through something in your life, you say, Pastor, I just want you to pray for me. I'm struggling, man. I need, I need prayer. Just, just email me at pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org, and I'll be glad to pray for you, and we'll reach out to you. And I, I want you to know that God is able to give you strength through this season of your life. Well, I hope this encouraged you not to fold your hand and fall asleep. I hope it inspired you not to be lazy. I hope it inspired you to be like the patriarchs that we're going to study later on in, in this study. It is really important for you to learn how to plant things. It's important for you to understand that you don't plant anything, you can't have anything. If you don't focus on learning the art of building assets and building a future, you can be a good Christian, you can love God, but you can be broke. It's not until you focus and it's not until you're consistent and embrace the truth that you can have what God wants you to have. I hope this sermon helped you. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for those today who watch. May it bless their life and inspire them to not just give money away, but build, build a future, build finances, build assets. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, it's been a joy having you with us. Tell a friend that this sermon blessed you, helped you. Send it to a friend and say, man, you need to watch this. This is helpful. I'll see you next time as we continue our study to show you how to have more financial clarity. God bless you.